I've got a real soft spot for anime love stories. From classics like Toradora to trash like Love Hina, there are a few romance-centric anime that I won't at least give a shot. At first, if I'm being perfectly honest, I got into those stories out of a simple desire to escape my own teenage loneliness, but as I've grown up, I've come to appreciate the way the genre allows us to explore characters and their relationships with greater depth and subtlety than is allowed by your typical shonen battle fracas. But, of course, the genre doesn't guarantee good writing. For every his and her circumstances, you got 20 Maburajos or Wolf Girl and Black Princes, and even among the good and great ones, you'll start to notice some, uh, shall we say, similarities. Repetitions in themes, setting, plot lines, and sometimes the story structure of entire shows. Anime that explore human relationships are a dime a dozen, a penny a dozen if you count romantic subplots in other genres, but most of them tend to focus on just one period in the development of those relationships, that is the beginning. Most romance anime and love stories in general are all about the chase. In Hero's Journey terms, the meet-cute is the call to action, the pursuit of romance creates the trials and tribulations of the journey, and the end goal of relationshipness is the elixir that the hero seeks. And in a sense, this is fine. Chasing the guy or girl of your dreams can feel like a big adventure, and it can be a story worth telling. But there are two big problems with it. The first is that it's kinda limiting. By choosing to tell this kind of story, you end up inevitably following a very time-worn structure without much room for variation. It goes more or less like this. Boy meets girl, then some mix of the following happens. Either one falls for the other one, they fall for each other but don't tell each other, one of them already has feelings for someone else, or they don't like each other at all and fall in love later. They're kept apart by a series of increasingly severe and absurd misunderstandings caused by miscommunication or the machinations of romantic rivals, until eventually they both figure out their feelings and get together, or maybe they don't if it's trying to be subversive. There's a lot that you can do to keep that formula feeling fresh, but there's only so much ground you can really cover with it. It only really allows you to talk about how people meet and form initial connections, and maybe how friendly or antagonistic relationships can change over time into something more. It kind of ignores the whole lifetime of experience that comes after two people decide that they will officially and maybe exclusively have sex on the regs. And that's the second, bigger problem. A lot of these stories present a relationship as a state that you attain as part of your happily ever after, which is something that just doesn't exist in real life. Good relationships are built up over years with hard work, communication, and loyalty, and there's a lot of interesting stories that can come out of that process. Stories that we rarely get to see on screen because it's kinda hard to fit them into the standard hero wants thing, hero pursues thing, hero learns important important lesson and maybe gets thing if it's really what's best for them, story structure that dominates most media. But those stories are still interesting, they're still a huge part of the experience of romance, and they're still something that a lot of people could use guidance in navigating themselves. Which is a big part of what makes Otakoi, my third favorite show of spring 2018, feel like such a breath of fresh air. It's not about two people on a glacial collision course with their romantic destiny, it's it's about two friends with common interests who decide to try dating and then gradually fall in love with each other over the course of their relationship. And it's also about the dysfunctional but loving existing relationship between their two co-workers. There's a lot of nerdy references tossed in on top to draw in the otaku crowd, and to some extent the show is explicitly about otaku's dating, but while the title is Love is Hard for an Otaku, the underlying theme is really that love is just generally hard for, you know, people. It's just a little bit harder for otaku when they try to cover up their nerdy nature in day-to-day -day life. Our protagonists, Narumi and Hirotaka, definitely have otaku problems, but their real issues come from trying to read each other's minds instead of being open about how they're feeling, from wallowing in their own deep-rooted insecurities, the kinds of real issues that plague most early relationships, and a lot of the series' conflicts come from them learning to navigate those pitfalls. Momos Narumi, a 26-year-old, really loves Yaoi and is a big fan. She recently changed jobs because she wanted people to see her as a perfect and beautiful young lady. But her plan gets messed up when she meets Nifuji Hirotaka, a guy from her middle school days who loves playing video games and knows about her love for Yaoi. They reconnect over drinks, and Hirotaka promises not to tell anyone about Narumi's jiki side. They talk about how it's hard for them to find love because people think they're strange. 
Two weeks later, Narumi asks Hirotaka to go for drinks again. She's late finishing her work, so Hirotaka stays to help her. While they're drinking, Hirotaka asks Narumi out and offers to help her with her gain levels. Narumi is excited and says yes. Narumi becomes friends with her co-worker, Koyanagi Hanako, who is a famous nerd that loves dressing up in costumes. Hirotaka notices Narumi avoiding him at work because she's not sure how to act now that they're in a relationship. Koyanagi's longtime boyfriend, Kabakura Teru, who is also Hirotaka's friend, tries to help, but they end up arguing. As Narumi tries to leave, Hirotaka apologizes for scaring her and assures her that he genuinely likes her, not just because they're both nerds. After work, the four of them go to a bookstore, but then each goes home to read manga and play games instead of going out for drinks. Narumi, Hirotaka, Koyanagi, and Kabakura go to a comics expo. Hirotaka helps Narumi with her yaoi fanzine stand, and Kabakura watches Koyanagi dress up as different male characters. After the expo, they go back to their usual routine. Narumi visits Hirotaka's place to play video games, feeling a bit nervous at first. Koyanagi and Kabakura join them later. While Hirotaka is in the shower, Koyanagi and Narumi playfully try to find his hidden stuff. But instead, Narumi discovers old card games from their middle school days. They remember how they became friends by trading character pencils, and then Hirotaka kisses Narumi. The next day, Kabakura is surprised to find a mysterious stash of adult content hidden in his desk drawer. Hirotaka and Narumi enjoy watching their favorite childhood anime together during their work break. When Narumi shows a picture of Hirotaka cross-dressing to Kabakura and Koyanagi, it leads to Koyanagi suggesting Kabakura should cosplay too. However, this idea causes them to argue. Narumi points out that even though she and Hirotaka have different interests, they're willing to compromise and work things out. Later, the four co-workers go out for drinks. Narumi asks Koyanagi and Kabakura about how they started dating in high school, but it turns into an argument. Koyanagi, who is drunk, breaks down and shares her insecurities, worrying that Kabakura might not really like her for who she is. Kabakura comforts her, and on the way home, Narumi asks Hirotaka the same question. He reassures her once again that he's genuinely committed to their relationship. They decide to stop by the arcade before heading home. Narumi meets someone familiar, a barista in a cafe. Koyanagi and Kabakura think the barista might be Narumi's ex-boyfriend. They debate whether to call Hirotaka to the cafe. When Hirotaka arrives, Kabakura quickly calls him to avoid drama. It turns out the barista is Nifuji Noya, Hirotaka's younger brother. Hirotaka reluctantly lets Noya stay at his house because it's close to his college. As the four friends hang out at Hirotaka's place, they realize Noya isn't into nerdy stuff. They try to be careful about what they talk about. Narumi suggests a team game, putting the brothers together even though Hirotaka isn't thrilled because Noya isn't very good. Noya messes up, and Hirotaka, used to playing alone, wins and falls asleep on the couch. Noya walks Narumi home, and Kabakura, still suspicious, tells him that Narumi and Hirotaka are dating. Koyanagi kisses Kabakura to show they're a couple too. Noya gets emotional because he worried his brother would end up alone, and Kabakura is touched by Noya's care for his brother. The next day at work, Kabakura advises Hirotaka to take care of Noya. On a rainy day, Kabakura lends Narumi and Hirotaka his umbrella when they realize they forgot theirs. He dashes through the rain and joins Koyanagi under her umbrella. They go to his place for dinner, and Koyanagi worries about him getting sick. The next day, Hirotaka notices Narumi feeling a bit down. Despite her attempts to hide it, he comforts her, and she explains that her favorite manga character recently died in a chapter. Hirotaka and Narumi walk home together as the city decorates for Christmas. They find Noya dressed as Santa giving out coffee samples. Noya is happy to bring smiles to others and be their real Santa Claus. On Christmas Eve, Koyanagi, upset that Kabakura was too busy last Christmas, leaves the office early. Kabakura chases after her, and they go on a date at a fancy restaurant. Kabakura had reserved it six months earlier to make up for the previous year. Koyanagi gives him a special anim plushie. Meanwhile, Hirotaka and Narumi spend their first Christmas playing games together. The four friends play an online adventure game. Narumi, Koyanagi, and Kabakura find a rare enemy, but can't defeat it because they're too weak. Hirotaka's avatar, controlled by Noya at the moment, shows up since Hirotaka is busy. 
Luckily, Hirotaka returns quickly and easily beats the enemy. Kabakura goes out for drinks with his younger colleagues, including Hirotaka, while the women have dinner together. Two guys talk about Narumi, not knowing Hirotaka is her boyfriend. They also talk about Koyanagi, which makes Kabakura mad, though he tries to hide it. Narumi and Koyanagi disagree about their preferences in anime pairings and talk about making their boyfriend's characters in a boy's love situation. Later, Naoya tells Hirotaka that he overheard the girls and thought they were arguing about whose boyfriend was better. It's a windy day at work, and Hirotaka confesses he's scared of thunder because it reminds him of losing unsaved games during power outages caused by lightning. To help him focus, Kabakura lets him wear headphones for the day. While Hirotaka takes a break for a smoke, Narumi joins him. They remember a time when Narumi hugged him tightly during a thunderstorm. They go back to work as the storm passes. Hirotaka remembers piercing his own ears in high school to seem mature after seeing Narumi with a guy who had earrings. Unable to remove the earring, he cried because it hurt. After drinks with everyone, Hirotaka thinks about how Narumi doesn't see him as a boyfriend and worries about being different from a regular boyfriend in terms of dates and attitude. While walking home together, Hirotaka decides to ask her on a traditional date next Sunday. Hirotaka and Narumi have a date at an amusement park with a special rule. Whoever talks about nerd stuff has to pay 500 yen. On a scary ride, Narumi accidentally pairs up with Kabakura, and Hirotaka ends up with Koyanagi, who are also on a date coincidentally. Koyanagi tells Hirotaka it's okay to go at their own pace in a relationship. At the end of the day, Hirotaka reflects on how Narumi used to drag him around as kids and how she's made many memories while he's stuck in his own world playing games. They lift the penalty, and Narumi gives Hirotaka earrings, expressing her desire to see his wanting to become more adult-like side. They hug, but later, Hirotaka realizes one ear hole closed up. Noaya meets a customer at his part-time job who reminds him of his brother when playing games. The next day, he meets the same person at his university cafeteria, and it turns out to be Sakuraji Q. Noaya doesn't realize she's a girl because of her appearance and voice. Despite Naoya not being good at gaming, he invites Q to play with him and asks Narumi and her friends for help. While struggling in a tough quest, a mysterious player saves them before Hirotaka arrives. Naoya thinks it's Q and thanks her. Hirotaka breaks his glasses, and without them, his poor eyesight affects his work. His female co-workers notice his handsome face without glasses, distracting Narumi and making her jealous. To help them focus, Kabakura lets them take an early lunch break for Hirotaka to get new glasses. Later, Naoya uses his brother's computer to play games with Kao. Despite failing many times, Kao doesn't give up on Naoya and patiently helps him improve. Hirotaka, curious about Naoya's sudden interest in games, logs in as Naoya's avatar and helps Kao complete a quest. Naoya, returning after a phone call, apologizes and thinks of quitting, but Ku promises to help him and invites him to keep playing together. Koyanji remembers when she and Kabakura used to argue over the gym as captains of the girls and boys' volleyball teams. Meanwhile, Narumi buys snacks for Hirotaka on the last day of vacation and finds him passed out from playing games without eating or sleeping. She decides to cook fried rice for him and accidentally sees him naked after his shower. At Kabakura's house, they argue about boys' love manga, but Koyanji wants to share her joy with others, and Kabakura compromises by skimming one finding it surprisingly enjoyable. Narumi makes Hirotaka go on a date, but they end up at her house watching a show with her favorite voice actor. She promises to cook for him again. Kao searches for Naoya when he hasn't logged in, and she gives him a game guide she made. In a post credit scene, Narumi asks Naoya about his first love, and he shyly admits it was his kindergarten teacher. As the co-workers leave the cafe, Naoya mentions Hirotaka dating his first love, but Hirotaka stops him with a look. There are a lot of potentially great love stories out there waiting to be told and waiting for us to fall in love with them. 